Hey, Thrawn here, and when I went to the grand opening of Allsfolk Viking Martial Arts in Egan, Minnesota, not only did I get to hang out with author Von Eschen, most generous host, and uh, Demicanter, or Roland Varzeka, and even go out to eat at nice restaurants, but one of the greatest highlights of the entire trip was at the end. We actually went to Arms and Armor. And uh, I guess in the words of uh, author Von Eschen, uh, he would explain the rest. Kind of affiliated is, you know, Oakshot is the organization that collects the authentic weapons, so these are the actual mm -hmm. Viking Age weapons, and then Arms and Armor is really the reproduction arm. Uh-huh, okay. Well, it's pretty cool to have that reference. So they reproduce the same weapons then? Oh yeah, that's super nice to have that. Here. So they have the actual weapons of reproducing. Now that is perfect. We're actually stating that the reproduction <laughs> of the sword due to the yeah. balance didn't sell very well when they no, it wasn't, it wasn't the balance. It wasn't the balance. Well, balance is somewhat. Okay. Balance somewhat, but the, the reduction of the grip to con circumference. Oh, from that's what it was. That was one. The yeah, reduction. It, a lot of people didn't like that. They thought it was too tight. Oh, it was yeah. Idea. They thought the grip was too tight. Sorry, I misunderstood what he was going to say. I was going to say that the knife was beautiful to me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Point of balance. Oh, you need help, Chris? It's not extremely heavy, in my opinion. Okay. Yes, yeah, so also because people tend to fist grip I mean, stuff. I can't really yeah. grip the handle because uh, it is the original handle. But if I put my hand around it, that doesn't feel like it would be that. Yeah, plus you, how, how long would you hold the, your sword okay. in a fist in it, instead of uh, using it uh, with an elongated grip? Like, and it's moving all the time. Oh, so. yeah, you're right. You're not going to hold yeah, it in a hammer grip. Actually, you don't hold it like a sledgehammer or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right. a firm believer. So your hand would be... Yeah. In a position very much like this, and on, on the pommel too. Well, it depends. You no. know what you're doing. I, I don't touch it. Oh yeah. You're, no, I mean you're messing up your sword play if you're no, grabbing don't that. The, don't grab the pommel at all. It, yeah, three two two seven A says, do not oh. hinder the pommel. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say anything about turning. It doesn't say anything about grabbing. It says, do not hinder the pommel. So if you think about it, in the process of use of the sword. But then he's striking. Uh, he's uh, talking about a strike. Yeah, I was talking about when it yeah. reaches out. I wasn't talking about why you're actually no, but think, in use. Think I was about going to the turn. How tight it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> think about going to the turn. Okay, as you turn that sword, that back of that grip is just moving back and forth in your hand. You should oh, not I be see. making is contact. Ooh, because yeah, right? it will hinder your. Uh, yeah, you're hindering your turn, right? So the only time that back hand really needs to be on the long sword is that contact point. Mm -hmm. That's Let's when you stabilize it, so yeah. yeah. And That's I one create the, the triangle and Oh, I, I see what you're saying. It's so, more so you're ba basically, oh, I can't do it with the glove. Um, so you're basically more or less I clamping the throat, the neck above the pommel. You're uh, clamping it so it can rotate and here these remain open to... Yeah, I don't... That's I, almost the too tight. The doesn't aid in the cut so much until the cut actually takes right, place. Right, yeah. Kind of That's when it stabilizes the yeah, sword. Yeah. This is a much longer sword, but... Demonstrated here, and the reason I the reason I came to this conclusion is when you get into the real um, I'm getting out of legs, you got a long blade. The real lovely uh, late uh, long swords, many of them, or not many of them, some of them will come, and this whole upper section of the grip is steel and very very thin. Correct. Right, I got a reproduction in the other room. I can show you. Um, and I'm, and you know, I'm thinking in my mind, it's like, okay, it looks cool, but why, you know, and why? And why then I started playing with it, right? I started playing with it, and it was at the same time I was figuring that four ring out, and suddenly if my thumb's here and I'm turning, then I don't. This back hand just floats. Oh okay? yeah. This back hand doesn't need to be on the sword ever. Right. right. You know, it just it's just riding back here. So if it's steel, there's no hindering of the sword. I can just I move see. it through all of the actions I want to, and the only time I really need or desire to have that contact is when I'm coming in and doing my action. They and put so, the tension on it to uh, so basically apply the brace to the yeah. sword to cut, to give the sword extra yeah. power. Yeah. That's why basically this, uh, this moment where you tense up, and that's when you if when you, you swing the sword, it also helps you control the sword. The back on yeah. So you don't really have to have a tie on it unless you're totally actually relaxing. either Boom. controlling that's the sword. That's moment or when you actually hit it. I like that. It makes out. perfect sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it creates a much more fluid action of the sword. And it also will uh, work on the pommel. You see the etching around the uh, fluting. Stress on your, 
on your. Uh, I guess floating would be the proper term. Yes. <laughs> very, very beautiful. Uh, it's one of the concepts I find hardest to teach in my I beginners. So. Is that idea? Twenty-four. Of if holding it loosely in the front hand and not at all with the back hand. I wanted to show that uh, in the cruciform design that it has, it also has a cross on this side. Uh, looks like it's stamped into the blade. It's stamped in or etched in, you'd say. Probably stamped, right? It looks like it was stamped in. Great. Looks like it was stamped when it was made. Is that a, is that a stamp? Uh, right? Apologies, what? Is that a stamp? It looks like it was stamped in the cross. Yeah, oh yeah, it's stamped it's in. It's stamped in, it's not etched in, yeah. it's stamped it's in. A and it's stamped it's a on punch. both sides. Yeah, it's a it punch. Punched on both sides, but opposite of the blade. But it looks like the cross that, uh, actually, as if you were holding the sword up as a cross, it matches it. Hmm. I found that interesting. I love the blade genre in the shape. Nice broad blade. Do you have one of these on the rack? I think I sold it. Okay. That one that we were taking pictures of? Yeah, I think we sold that. Okay. And the pommel is loose so you can kind of see how Perfect. wide the tang is. And how the blade fits in. And it's just kind of a long groove. That yeah, long groove, very shallow. Long groove, very shallow. And it's pretty much a straight rod other than the, the uh, rectangular piece that comes from the quillion and it kind of bulbs out a little bit and it does the same fluting as the, as the palm. Beautiful sword. Uh, does this one have a name? We call it the Schloss Airbach sword because it's said to have come from the armory of Schloss Airbach. Oh, excellent. excellent.